On March 13th, 2020, Breonna Taylor was murdered by Louisville police inside her own home. The police were executing a no-knock warrant at the wrong address. The officers involved have still not been charged. These no-knock warrants are now illegal in Louisville thanks to the passing of Brianna's law. Please stand with Brianna and demand justice for her by signing the petition, writing to and calling Kentucky state officials and local Louisville officials, and, if you're able to, donating to the Louisville Bail Fund or the Justice for Brianna Taylor GoFundMe. Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Say DIY, and I've been working on a lot of kind of smaller projects recently. Uh, this was going on while I was finishing up the uh, xylophone, the MIDI xylophone project, and then also after. And I thought it would be, it would make sense to just kind of do a video, kind of getting caught up on what I've been working on. Uh, it's mainly code stuff, but uh, yeah, let's uh, jump in. Alright, uh, so this was an Adafruit project that uh, Noe Ruiz uh, designed up. Basically it's a little mini like solder fume fan extractor, so there's space to put a carbon filter in. I don't have one in right now. But uh, it was basically using this little um, like 5 volt uh, fan powering off a USB. Uh, I didn't have that exact model fan, but I've had this Noctua fan, this little guy for a while, I've used it to cool Raspberry Pis and stuff, not like in a proper housing or anything, but just to like have nearby. And I thought it'd be cool to remix uh, his design to make it fit the Noctua fan, because a lot of people do have that fan because I don't have the cable on here, but there it does come with an adapter to hook up to USB. So uh, yeah, I remixed it in Fusion. I hadn't really remixed something before to like fit another object that's like the same kind of object, you know what I mean? Um, so. It was pretty cool though, um, it went smoothly, uh, I'm happy with it. The design calls for googly eyes, which I didn't have any, unfortunately, and you know I love a, I love a cute aesthetic, so instead, uh, Noe being, um, you know, fastidious in his Fusion 360, uh, expertise, he did design in the googly eyes into his model, so I took that and basically kind of extruded out the the pupils so that they would print um, and then explored that out as an STL and then did a color swap when the pupil starts and now I've got some 3D printed eyes uh, and I'll be releasing this as a remix on Thingiverse if you have uh, the Noctua fan you want to make your own or maybe you want to like print the eyes all, all sorts of options <laughs> I've been working on slowly, not quite surely, um, porting Blinka, which is CircuitPython for like Linux uh, and single board computers, uh, to the Tinkerboard. Um, I've never done anything like that before, and I'm gonna be real honest with you. Uh, I barely know how to use GitHub. I really just started a couple months ago doing very simple, like, I'm committing this code, I'm opening a pull request. Oh, cool, you're merging it for me. Great, thank you. That's really all I've done. Um, and this definitely involves, like, not advanced stuff. I mean, if you're a programmer and, like, you're into Git, then, you know, like, you, it wouldn't be weird, but, like, you fork it and you, you have to do all this. You have to do all this stuff. Um, and then combined with the fact that I also haven't ever ported something for, like, another platform, I, it's just, it's not my normal coding shtick, you know? Uh, but I, I do, I, I'm excited about it because I think it'll only make me um, a little bit more like stronger with Python and stuff. Uh, so basically, right now I have it so that when you run this script called a platform detect, it knows that this is a Tinkerboard, um, which is that's cool. Uh, and I'm just kind of finessing how that will live right now and getting that committed onto GitHub. And uh, I've been working with Melissa from Adafruit. She's awesome. Big shout out to her. She kind of, she's kind of running the the Blinka stuff. So, yes, she's been very helpful and very patient with me. So thank you, Melissa. Thank you. 
Um, so yeah, I've been working on that off and on. So hopefully, you know, eventually Blink will be running on Tinkerboard and Tinkerboard S. Uh, fun fact, the Tinkerboard S, which was like the next gen Tinkerboard, it actually has the same system on chip um, as the OG Tinkerboard. So it's kind of the equivalent of like the Raspberry Pi 3B and when they did the Raspberry Pi 3B plus, it's kind of like that. So just fun facts in the world of single board computers. David Watts, as you know, we're doing a collab on, isn't this USB cable great? I love it. We're doing a collab on like a tap tempo kind of thing. Who knows what the full parameters of that will be. But uh, just to test my theory, if you saw my video where I talked about tap tempo and things, I did code up a little example uh, in CircuitPython using a clue board uh, where uh, actually John Park had released a project where he did an actual metronome where you could like put in the actual beats per minute and have it play. So I kind of based it off of that code. So instead I'm tapping in the beats per minute. And so let's do that. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it works. It works. Yeah. And then you can clear that out and put in another one. Let's go faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So that was hard um, <laughs> to do. So, uh, but I, I was excited. I got like a working example going on the clue and really just a proof of concept. There's nothing too fancy. I might throw the code up on GitHub if you're, if you're curious about it. Um, and then I also recently got some like cap touch breakouts and also a real time clock module breakout too. So, you know, if we go in that direction, maybe we can kind of tap into that, make <laughs> tap. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. We'll see where that, where that all goes, but tap tempo, you can do it in circuit Python, which was, and also cap touch, which this was great to see. I, I liked getting that set. This is another work in progress. I'm coding a, a video game. I've never done that. Um, <laughs> this has been a huge learning curve, but basically uh, Lady Ada Lamore from uh, Adafruit, she asked if I would try uh, coding like a circuit Python version of that uh, like Google Chrome crashed browser game where the dinosaur's running and he jumps over the cactus. So I, I did that, I call it Blink a Jump. Okay. Uh, and I'm using like the circuit playground characters. So like when I start, like Blinka, Blinka jumps and when it's done, it's game over. I can start it again though. And oh God, um, when, I, yeah, when she jumps, like there's a little clicky sound, like, ooh, and there's like a score bonus. Oh, when she hits though, you know, there, yeah. So there's some sound effects and things. This has been tricky. I've never, ever, ever coded a video game. I play video games, but not really. Um, so that's just never been something I've pursued. But yeah, this is all, this isn't using any fancy like video game, like gaming libraries. This is all using Display.io, which for those that do CircuitPython, like you'll know that's really just for making graphics. So I'm kind of like, I've got all these things going on with sprites and making it so that they're all moving like separately. It's a lot happening. Uh, but hopefully this will be all set soon. There's a couple things I want to, fix up a little, but making progress. Uh, and this, this has been really fun to work on. Uh, like I said, I've never done anything like this before. So <music> this project, I did this last week again with Noe. Uh, I had this idea where, um, I always go to this Fender website to tune my acoustic guitar. And so basically you go to this website, and you click on the string, and it plays a string for you. Then I was like, oh man, I bet you could do that with a uh, Pi Portal and have it so it's like a touch screen interface. And that is what we did. Um, and I did this awesome guitar headstock graphic, like so good. I, I'm not skilled like that. Uh, it looks so pretty. And then the code was really easy, like super easy. Basically like it's just, like looking for a touch input 
And if you touch in the coordinates on the screen, then it plays the specified note for that touch location. And they did a great job designing the case. I think it looks really sleek. Kind of looks like an arcade cabinet. Might be cool to do something like that in the future. Imagine Tetris running on something like this. You could have little buttons. I'm just saying. Um, or even like a phone proper upper KC thing. Yeah, but really cool. Um, this was a fun project to do. And uh, now I can tune my guitar with a pipe portal and you can too. And last on our magical mystery tour, did this one, I want to say, like, the, the two weeks leading up to the robot xylophone, uh, we did, Noe and I did uh, two projects that were kind of similar. One was called the Buzzy Box, and the other one was called the Vibration Bracelet. And basically, um, what this is, is it has a, a Feather NRF52840, that's the Bluetooth Feather, and it's got a vibration motor in it. And what happens is when I get a notification on my phone, um, this lights up and buzzes. Uh, and like we based it on the IKEA Frexven, um, Frexven, uh, uh, a little portable speaker. You can see the resemblance. No, I did the design, of course. Um, and yeah, pretty cool. This is a device I've actually, I've been using it since we did it because I'm really bad at noticing my phone has a notification. So uh, with this code, um, th it'll stay lit up. And so if I see this light, I know I should check my phone. <laughs> uh, so it's been, been handy. Uh, when we, for the, this is called the Buzzy Box iteration. This is the first one. And all that would happen is the NeoPixel would light up. Uh, and then that's how you know you had a notification. And it also vibrates every hour to let you know like mindfulness. Um, like get up out of your chair, walk around. Uh, and then for the mindfulness bracelet, I updated the code a little bit so that the NeoPixel reflect changed color depending on what app you're getting a notification from. And that's the code I have running on this now. So that was kind of like version 2.0. So yeah, buzzy box. I'm very into this aesthetic. But yeah, it's been some stuff I've been working on. Um, a lot of different things, uh, mainly code stuff. Uh, but I want to do this video because like some of the stuff, you know, it's really short. I don't know if it would really like make the most sense to make a full video on it. So I thought I'd do just kind of a massive update uh, and that will do it for the, the massive update. Uh, if you like this video, toss me a thumbs up, leave a questions or comments down below. I'll have links to all these things um, down in the description. Uh, and if you like this format of like a project update thing, let me know. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.